Right, we shall do our usual quick sort of the details up there. And we will now set in that nice big clunk of mass in the middle that everybody wants to get. And we have team one on the top hand here, team two down the bottom. And let's have a gander for team number one. First up, going in the front slot, in case you can't read the name right there, it is Mr. Blastman. Anyway, he's Cybran and he is in bright pink, opening up first land on there. He's got a second land factory planned after a mix. So he's not walking straight to the middle first. He's getting a wee bit of blue power in the back here. Then he's going to get on his way. An interesting choice. We'll see how that works out for him. Up here on the beach, in the beach navy position, it is Kuha. Ku Kuha, one, two, three. Anyway, Kuha is UEF. He has got the nice lavender color there. And he's getting his mixes down with his land factory. On the navy rock position for team number two, it is Speculari. And Speculari is going to just be absolutely spe specular. Speculations abound is what he's going to do. But he's UEF. He's getting some opinions down and he's getting an air factory so probably going to do some things on there but anyway in the rear guard air position for team number one it is early doors the doors is uef and early doors is burgundy so having a look at team number one the composition is three uef and one cybran a bit of a mismatch on there for that guy let's have a gander at team number two and first off on the front section it is printer and will this printer work properly is the question. And light blue, he's already stomping his way towards mid. He's well ahead of his opponent. But do remember the extra factory down could be a bit of an advantage. We'll have to see how it goes. Currently relying on the energy reclaim from these engineers grabbing trees. But uh can see to be had back there. Anyway, on the beach, navy position, Twigman. Twigman is another siren. He's in the orange color. And he's done a fairly typical wander over here. Grab the hydro, then grab the air factory. And we'll see if he can get through with that. In the navy rock position for team number two, it is Cascade. Cascade is grey and also sovereign. And he's getting his air factory up now. Which beats his opponent. No, it doesn't. It's actually an earlier air factory. Or Kua. But Kua's not going for that early transport. He's going for some combat units first. We see the first transport plane has to come out from Cascade. We'll see how that goes on. And in the rear air position for team number two, the final player of the game, also another Cybran. It is Cheeseberry. And Cheeseberry is orange. Right, so he's got a ring planned here. There's going to be an air factory thrown down in the middle of that. And he's getting an upgrade on the T2 mix. So, and begs the question. Factory is getting down intercept off here for Specularis, so he wants to prevent a potential drop down this way. And potential drop is going to be no, no drop plane there. It's currently just some entities and some scouts, so they're wanting to stop drops happening before they go. But I don't think they're going to stop this one. The transport is on the way, it is ready to unload its engineers onto the side island here. And that intercept is not going to make it. Let's have a quick look in the middle though. And it's just a couple of commanders there just scooping up some mass because that's what they do. But these really irritating little hunters, they are going around, they're killing engines. Got a counter hunters coming out. In fact, a mantis coming out. But these guys are not going to survive. They're going to have a bad, bad time from that. So that's actually not a bad pick up there because it's going to slow down the energy production for Mr. Blastman. There we go. Engineers dropped off the transport in fact that were dropped off on separate locations just in case of a bomber. One, two, three engines building up a land factory and that is going to be a decent hold on there. Right. Interceptors are out from Speculari to try and stop this kind of thing. Distracting the Inties of Twigman which is exactly a grand old idea which then means that transport is going to be able to land quite happily quite easily. And you can be able to hold that island for now. Okay, in the middle, these two guys, again, more focused on scooping mass and shooting each other. Just the occasional shots that will come on down as they get what they can into the coffers. Just incidental shots like that. Nobody really cares. They both basically just ignore it. It's going to be all about the units that come on in. We see there are now three land factories in play for printer. Going to compare that to the four what Mr. Blastman and he's getting some T2 mixes going with that reclaim as well so having a good old time. 
There we go. Nice solid hold on there and picking up some... Well, he's picking up a couple of hunters. Could have picked up a couple of third ones. So he'd third and fourth been hung around for just a moment longer. Looks like he's wanting to do a drop though. Maybe he can sneak those up here, get them in early and kill off some NGs, kill off some Ego. We'll see how that works out from in the middle. These two guys are now actually trading blows a little bit more seriously. Still, I think, wanting to get the reclaim, but Blast Man is come off a lot worse. Although he has more units coming in now, and that could be the deciding factor between the two. Both of them going for that, and there we go. The units are going to say hello if Printer decides to do reclaim. But having said that, these units got a wee bit too close, and they're going to take some damage. But the commanders are much more close in their health now, although still advantage Blast Man. Just point blank, there's no gunplay here, nothing trying to outwit, they're just looking straight at each other. And Printer is going for the reclaim. I wonder if he's going to... Oh dear, he's going to catch a couple of units out when he does that. He's going to stop, do the reclaim, maybe, maybe not, he's going to keep moving. There we go, reclaim going off. And that's going to give a chance for Blast Man to even up some of the health, but there's more units coming in from Printer. So it's going to still be fairly even between the two. And they kind of don't want to get into it right now because if they keep shooting at each other, it'll be a mutual KO. They're of similar health. Blast Man may be a little bit lower, but he's got a few more units on the ground. He could dish out a bit of extra damage there. So yeah, I think neither both of them are going to think about falling back and not engaging. Right, the islands are held by the rock players as expected. They have done as is typical to hold onto the rock and get that wee bit of extra eco out of there. That's five mixes that can be upgraded. No good times. And well, we see that Blastman is actually falling back a little bit. He's looking to step down some walls just to try and deny your run bys on the left by smaller units. And Mantis on Mantis never goes well for the Mantis. The Mantis technique generally end up losing. Surprise, surprise. But it's with the commander in residence. It's going to just shoot them away that little bit. And we can have a good old time. Our right, scouts are all over the place for these guys. Have a look. And, well, this drop may get spotted. In fact, I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Is there going to be a ping on that? Well... Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat and I'm about to cough. And indeed, here we go, the drop that got noticed, the ping has been put down and it's been searched for, but that drop is not going where they think it is. That is distracting interceptors moving up this way, perhaps they will turn around at a most inopportune time. Yes, they are, but the drop is going to run into these defending entities from Speculari unless they move away as well. The answer is no. Spotted. Spotted. Locked on. And that is a dead transport. And those are four dead labs. So the uh, decoy air wing up this way almost worked. Certainly fooled Kuai, who moved his insectors up. But Speculari with just a few covered ones in this bay here just just enough and hello big battle in the middle now this is blast man moving on up he has a lot of units with his com still is too close though they don't really want to get into a com versus com engage it would still be a mutual ko at this particular point in time though i think blast man has a slight advantage in units because back here you can see picnic has got a few point defense so he's gonna give up some ground on that with a more stable location to hold and now Printer has to run away. He's under 2500 down into the red. If he can get a rank of veteracy, that will help him out a great deal. But to do that, puts him at a bit of risk. Still 100 mass kills away, whereas Blast Man is still looking a wee bit better. And now he has this little mass field here that he can grab. There's, well, a few thousand mass ready to go. We can get some engineers up here. That would be got grand for helping out his boosting, boosting his eco. But it's gonna just keep going, kill off units one by one, get a rank of veteracy soon if he keeps that up. Gets those shots out, and there we go, rank of veteracy for Blast Man. He is now a much healthier comm, much better regen than Printer, though Printer's not far from a rank of veteracy of his own, but it is now time to grab the mass. There we go. Exactly what the commander's doing, starting to grab the mass, and we see engineers are moving up as well, and surprisingly, 
the Salem. Oh, there's not much left of it. It's been mostly scooped, so that is fine. Check out the navies, and we have oh, a bunch of factories planned out from Cascade. We have a bunch of factories planned out here from Kua as well. Do want a few plans to pop out just and maybe a few more units to get over this way to look at slowing things down. But there we go. The push of units up from Blast Man and Ill Advice push into T2. That's a rocket bot. So Hoplice are in play. We have Wagners in play, and this is all T1. It's not going to fare so well against all of that. And it really, really doesn't want to try and push into the T1 PD because that would be a bad, bad time. Last man in the meantime, he's just focusing on getting some reclaim of this com. Gonna pick up what he can, and it's actually not a bad idea, it's working. Then we see a T1 bomber comes over, it should take some damage from this anti air over this way. It's gonna pause at a terrible spot, but it does pick up. Oh, doesn't pick up, but maybe go for the radar. Doesn't get anything more done, and last man now, he's grabbed a whole bunch of extra eco with his comm, but he's going to have to think about falling back now in the face of T2. No upgrades on that commander, no gun, no T2 either, so he can't really stay and face off against that. What do we have going on back here? Well, we have Beatles. Beatles out of the T2 factory, trying to get up some more power, definitely needs it. And there we go, we can see a nice cloaked fire beetle. So Blastman, I think I saw him in the chat earlier, he was saying, hmm... I want to do some fire beetle stuff. That's exactly what he's doing now. Wagner's rolled on out. It is having to go at some poor hapless engineers. Medusa in the area trying to help defend, but it's not going to get much done. There is a T1 AA turret. That's going to get even less done against the Wagner. So the Wagner is going to get to roll around and another one in the water. Looks like it's just going to head up this way. Maybe be a bit harassing. Maybe kill off a couple of NGs. Maybe jump onto land and kill off a mass extractor. Don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But in the middle, a terrible place to park your Inceptor, it will die. Well, didn't even get a chance to land actually because these guys never finished it off. And it is time for these guys to move back because they are facing a gun comb along with a T2 that was around. There we go. Rocket bots back here. So T2, T2 units plus a gun comb. And that's going to be time for Blast Man to think, yeah, nah. I'm done. T1 PD was slapped down by these engineers. Good timing. It was off the Wagner going to help it going any further alrighty beetles beetles away they have a stealth with them or is it just straight out beetles I think it's just straight out beetles so that will possibly be spotted by air in fact an air <laughs> that got spotted directly spy plane flies right overhead of it and it got spotted did get seen and is getting pinged out so these beetles ain't gonna get too far beetle drop has been mentioned by twigman it has been spotted and we see the asf are moving in along with some scouting trying to locate us and it's maybe gonna get past it go straight in now maybe it has been picked up and radar well nobody's seen it just as of yet it might actually make it Go, go, the beetle drop. Although, no, some ASFs coming in from the other side of the pond. They're going to see the transport just at the wrong time indeed. Dear, oh dear. So very, very close. If those two ASF hadn't been coming back from a reinforcing position over here, those beetles would have landed and they could have caused some real havoc. Could have done a lot of damage. Maybe killed off the HQ there, killed off some of the mixes. But man... That was lucky that you just happened to have those two ASFs coming back from this point to reinforce over here. So close, no cigar. All sections are all but finished here, leaving this tiny gap for units that have to come through here if they push on in. We're going to be greeted by a T1PD, which is going to have a grand old time doing that. I hear bombers, T1 bombers perhaps? Ah, yes. That Wagner, nine kills to his name. A couple of ranks of immunity, it has done good things. Either what is the kill? Do they see much dead in the way of obstruction? Maybe that mass extractor there? I don't know if it really got that much. Anyway, some good kills, some good ranks. It must have done pretty good for itself. And let's check back into the navies how we're doing. Well, this is still all T1. Oh, there's T2. So T2 upgrade on the way for Cas the Cascade. That is 75% done. We have 
any kind of upgrades going on down here? No, we do not. So let's stick into the T1 Navy for Ua. And I think that's a mistake. He's going to struggle with T1 Navy against T2. You want to think about upgrading that right about now, I'd say. No more units. Get the upgrade on the way. You're going to need it. Check out the Navy down here. And we have... No T2 on the way here either. This is all sticking T1. Maybe that factor will go T2. You have to try and check out. And we have T2 on the way here for Twigman. So both of the Team 2 Navy guys are grabbing T2 Navy right now. And that is going to be a bit of a trick to try and catch up on. Especially if we're going to keep popping out T1. Okay. Let's eco back here. We have T2 air there for Mr. Blastman. We have T2 land as well. He's just working on a bit of eco right now. Upgrading some mixes and control tanks and factories. Going to reclaim those. Get some extra mass. Turn it into some more eco. And be a good old time. Stealth going down on the commander here. So gun com with stealth is of course not the nicest thing to try and deal with. <laughs> and a single producer. Left in range of this max extractor every time it gets built. And then gets turned around and destroyed. So... Probably a waste of mass as long as it can actually be accurate enough to kill it quickly enough. To this rate, it's not. Okay. Hey look, beetles. But the beetles are spotted. That's interesting. I thought they had cloak. Not stolen power or anything. No. I am curious as to what spotted those beetles. Was it actually the air scout? Is that all that needed to see them? I am very, very curious. What is the beetle's ability? Like, I thought they had cloaking. But that, does that just mean they aren't seen by visual eye? Of course, if they just got clothing, no stealth. I don't know. So beetles, yes, just cloaking. So they're not hidden from radar. They are just hidden from vision. So yes, radar will spot those things and that will be what had them opened up there there we go but speaking of stealth this com has it and going to be seen by redder is going to have a free kill on anything that wanders into range until it sees him there we go speaking of being seen the rocker bot nope let's go for the pd gets overcharged and that's the end of that thing All right land scout comes on up it's gonna die plenty of engineers so they are just grabbed this whole reclaim field in the middle here that all now belongs to the coffers of Mr. Printer, who is working on T3. Yes, indeed, that is 76% of the way towards a T3 upgrade on this factory there. If we look at factories upgrading, hasn't even started any kind of T3 upgrade on any factory as Blastman. Looks like he's just mostly focusing on Eco for the moment. Looks like he's just going to leave his commander. Took a couple of gambles with Beatles, and they did not pay off. Now he's just going to use his comm up the front as a deterrent. Going to slow things down and just keep armies at bay while he echoes up. Unfortunately, his opponent is also echoing up. There's not much in the way of armies anywhere for him to be worried about. There is eco. Three mixes have been done. Third one on the way. Of course, everything is all good for there. A couple of submarines on the right hand pond. They haven't fun with the frigates because these frigates cannot fight back. No death charges, no torpedo defense, no nothing. They will just be slowly killed by a couple of T1 subs. Definitely want to go T2 now. Question is which factory is going to do it? Well, apparently none of them. Still working on the T1 frigates. And your opponent has T2. Hasn't started making T2 yet. Oh, there we go. Take that back. This is a destroyer. That is coming out from Twigman, so one destroyer over here, that's going to prove very brutal for these frigates, especially with submarines and extra frigates and kind of like support. It's going to be a bad time over there. Let's have a gander on the other pond, check things out, and there's the T2 there, still working on just frigates though. So no actual T2 units coming out of that factory yet, it is available, but still sticking with the frigate spam. So we have this massive navy line all spread out by Kuwa, so he doesn't want to be surprised because I think he knows he's up against Cybran, so he wants to know where they're moving. The problem with that 
is that will be very easy for these units to just punch straight through. Hearing, uh, T1 Bombers. They're having a bomber, Mr. Blastman. I don't think he's going to care that much about that. Being team health in that command, a couple of ranks of veterans is going to take a very, very long time for those things to get his health down. And one ASF just swoops on and cleans those up. Then for good measure, kills the interceptors as well. Uh, T1 AA on the ground. Keep things under control if any more T1 bombs down. Okay. Speaking of bombers, we have a torpedo bomber up this way. It is going to do bad things to these submarines. They are horribly dead, but the destroyer is going to do worse things to these frigates. And they opt to fall back rather than anything else. And hello, not even bothering with the T2 stage, Speculari has skipped T2 entirely. Didn't build a single destroyer, a single cruiser. No, he's gone straight to T3 and that looks like a battle cruiser is lined up followed by a shield and a regular cruiser just to give some anti-air cover and that is going to be something that Twigman is going to want to be careful about and he's going to know that there's T3 available because this is a T2 factory that's greyed out that means it used to be there but it's not there anymore and he's going to know he's facing off against T3. What well, is his answer? Well sticking with T2 for the moment that is an interesting play from Speculari and the same thing has actually gone up here so this seems to be the UEF Navy thing to do at the moment skip your T2 stage go straight to T3 and throw out a well actually that's a battleship so Kuwa has decided to do battleship rather than battle cruiser I think that might be the wrong idea I reckon this is the better one Get battle cruisers out while you've got the T2. In fact, there's the uh, T2 support factory. That's going to start throwing out some shield boats to cover this here. But yeah, this here I think is the wrong choice. I think the battle cruiser is the better choice. It does better against T2 Navy and particularly T1 Navy as well. It has more rapid fire. I can kill off the units very quickly. Yes, battleship has got longer range, can do more damage, but it is much slower in the water. And it takes longer to kill the T1 units. There we go. Battle cruiser focusing out of this factory instead. What's queued up out of here? No idea. Go another couple of battleships. So two battleships. I think that's I think that's the wrong idea. Looks like he's playing in for the late game navy already. Going to struggle against all of this though. Have plenty of frigate production coming out of these. We have a T2 shift over here. Maybe we'll see some cruisers come out of that. Just gonna have to keep an eye on there. But hello to the battle cruiser. And that is probably a good thing to start considering pushing with. Got a couple of shield boats. In fact, got three shield boats rocking out over there. And I didn't even notice all of these. T3 factories down here. And well. They are just popping out frigates, which means they're going to put them out and it's an alarming rate. There's going to be lots of frigates coming out really quickly from there. Throwing the occasional shield boat as well, and that's going to be a grand old time. Popping out that front. Alright, T1 submarine wanders into range of the Neptune battlecruiser. Not a great idea, those torpedoes. Oh, it's going to take a while to kill it, but kill it they will. And now, they come with the T2 so far for good man. And, but we do have T3 down here as well. So Cascade and Kuai are doing similar things. They both got T3 and they're both going battleships. Have a look at that. Battleships lined up for the day. And that is what they are going to have fun with. Okay. Let's have a check on the air game. These two guys have been pretty quiet. Cheese. Cheese has 97 ASFs. 99. 100. There we go. 100 ASFs. Nice round number. Compare that to Early Doors, who has 119 loitering around. So he's actually done a wee bit better there. He's slightly ahead. Not enough to be an overwhelming advantage. So I don't think either air player would want to take that fight on just yet. But they get to keep production going. The guys in the middle, well, they're sort of petered out and done nothing. Focus on Echo a little bit to catch up to their... Excuse me, we have a hiccup there. But they've just been focusing on the ego, so I'm just wanting to catch up to their teammates with the coverage that they've got. Okay. 
bit of stealth. Still got a gun combo over there. Got some TMD in case of some snipe, some mixed sniper attempts. But that has not eventuated. That's right, doesn't need to worry about them anymore. Upgrade going down on the commander. Still not into the navy game though. Okay, speaking of navies, here we go. Massive battle over the side, and this battle cruiser is getting absolutely swarmed by frigates. Oh my, that's a lot of damage coming out of those. Needs to think about bringing these down to help cut them out, but. We have the destroyers back here which are not engaging, they're sticking at range, which is a grand old idea. They can just sit back here, they can kill our frigates willy nilly. Neptune has got some issues though, it's down under half health and it's not under the shields. The shield boats are going up and away from it, and this is actually kind of dangerous. Down into the red, still getting absolutely plinked by It's like the death of a thousand paper cuts. All of these delivery frigates, you want to move some of these shields down just to cover it, keep it alive perhaps. Second battle cruiser turns up, that can help ease the pain, but 3,000 health, 2,000, are we going to see a battle cruiser die to frigates? It was a lot of frigates, you got to admit. Get yeah, under the shields, you might survive if the shield boat can survive long enough, but it doesn't take some extra damage and 300 health. The battle cruiser is going to go down. That must be energy issues because all those shields just blink off at the same time. That is unfortunate timing, but timing it is. And that battle cruiser is dead to frigates. Congratulations. That's a surprise, but over here this way. You can see what's happened, the Speculari, rather than try to keep those alive, has, sorry, rather than try to keep the battle cruiser alive, decided to push him with the frigates and do as much damage as he could, and well, he could do a lot. He can take the naval cracker out of the game, he can take these frigates out of the game, he could actually move in right now, do a bit of damage, but harms are in the water. So the big man with the harms, and of course, these are some of the most potent naval weapons, they have great range. They do great damage. And you can't really see them until it's too late sometimes. We ground fire them with battleships, but other than that, they're actually pretty difficult to take down. Right, a bunch of frigates have come down this way. They're just wanting to clean up some of the naval factories. Gonna want to clean up the torpedo launcher first. Let's go to maybe try and stop these frigates coming off the assembly line. But probably not, and now they're getting pushed by other frigates as well, so they will be good. But the other navy in the meantime. Oh dear. Frigate rush from Cascade. And Frigate Rush indeed got a battleship back here as a bit of backup. And while the summit is focusing on the frigates in its face, as you're getting hammered by the galaxy all the way back here. Battle Cruiser is trying to do their thing, got plenty of tier 1 torpedo launches out, Blatman, the new rename his commander, he did it indeed, that is Kuba, but his cop is underwater and he's doing a reclaim mission on some of these frigates, trying to get something going on, but my word. He's got a battle cruise, he's got a couple battleships, so he got quite a bit of health that can be tanked there, but I see, yep, Barracudas as well. And they are going to be an absolute pain for the Neptunes to deal with, for the Summers to deal with. They don't have any kind of torpedo defense against that. There were some torpedoes. There we go. A bunch of torpedo launchers have been placed up on there. Throwing some triads on the beach. Needing to try and deal with a friggin' damn problem. And this naval HQ is now under massive threat. Plenty of damage coming in from the frigates and indeed the battleship as well. That is not going to survive, and that's going to be the HQ gone for Kuba. So that is his tech production in the water gone. The only thing he can keep building from here is frigates and T1 torp subs. The last man is trying to get into the Navy game up this way. Got some engineers up, throwing down a bunch of factories, getting production going. But if he gets spotted, well, he has been spotted. They know what's there, and you can see Cascade is sending units up this way to take care of it. Now, I know some are tough, but when you're facing up against three battleships versus one, you just ain't that tough. Cannot stop that. The health is going to go. And so the question is, what is there now? 
or Kua to do. Well, he's already reclaimed the factory and looks like his plan is to build another. He needs to get back into the T3 game as soon as possible, but just nothing doing from that point of view. He has been ousted. Checking out the other pond, Twiggerman has held on a lot better. Still got his factories up, still got a swarm of frigates, and we can see a counter swarm happening down this way. They're trying to move on in, and maybe they can take us some of the factories, take things down, but these harms. They have been the deciding factor there. They've got the range, they've got the damage. There's a single galaxy battleship here that has been scouted out. Get zipped a little bit by a Neptune, but it is the damage coming in from this thing. Doing a decent whack on their galaxy battleship. Also taking tech launch fire because it's sitting still. The rounds come in from the summit, smack into the stern of the galaxy. It gets done and it sinks underwater. Right, this air fight is ruining these guys are so nice and close to each other. Let's check out the numbers again. 208. 285 for Cheeseberry. Compare that to the 326. So early doors is keeping a slight air advantage for the moment. And that means torpedo bombers. Yes indeed, they're talking about SMD, so that must mean somebody is a nuke. Yes indeed, there we go. We have a nuke ready to go. That is just about good to launch. And where are we going to see this sent out on? So that's Cheeseberry, so that's maybe why he's behind in air a little bit, because he has built a nuke launcher. It's ready. Off it goes. Where is it going? I'm going to go from the middle here. Strategic launch detected. Oh, we see there is SMD. It's not loaded. SMD here, that's not loaded. They're loaded SMD over this way. No, there's not. There's so much eco to die. I don't see, okay, I, can't, I don't see the ping. That is... Going this way. Won't be going for the Navy, because these are all just frigates. That would be an absolute waste, so I suspect it's actually going for the island. Well, wouldn't be a bad pickup, actually. We have a bunch of T3 mixes. We have a huge amount of mass fabs. We have three T3 naval factories. And... If it lands right, I could kill all of that, and that would be quite decent. A good chunk of eco, a good chunk of build power. That will slow things down for Speculare. Indeed, here it goes. It's going to swing on down. And no, he's not going for the factories. He's going for all the eco. And I saw what Speculare did. He control K'd the T3 mixes and started reclaiming right away with the engineers trying to get as much mass out of them as he could before the nuke landed so that's an interesting tactic if you know the nukes can land control K and reclaim as much as possible before it all goes away right up this way we see torpedo coopers coopers with the torpedo defense throw in some shields over them they're going to help keep things alive from those harms a lot longer Distracting with those torpedo defense. Battlecruiser tries to come on through and help defend, but no good there. Gets pummeled by a pair of galaxies on that front. Of course, we have the Barracudas out as well, just being a little bit of a nuisance. Not much to slow them down. I feel like they are being used to target their shield boats specifically. And just sniping those off randomly. Plenty of battlecruisers, plenty of battleships, though. They're still a dangerous looking group. Of course, they are going to struggle somewhat with all these harms in the water. Be a bit of a trick to try and kill those. So you can ground by harms, of course. If you get yourself some battleships and if you tell them to shoot the ground, they can actually damage the harms due to the AOE explosion from the cannons. And you could we could see some of that coming up soon. If they want to slow things down, if they want to keep that going. So, bit of a air split over here. So. We see Cheese sent a few ASS up this way, just wanting to cut out the torpedo bombers that have been churning out from Mr. Kuba, because he's trying to get himself back into the back into the Navy game the only way he can, which is by air, and just trying to hold things off, which is exactly what's going on, but not too much longer. His commander is still in the water down here. Don't know if that's a wise idea, but it's the idea he's got, and we have Riptides. So these guys coming out and they're going to have a grand old time, they're going to fight against some 
lots of frigates and gotta say mess for mess I think the frigates win this one they have a decent amount of health and when grouped together they can do a scary amount of damage against all of those now the last man has a problem all of battleships off the coast but check it out at the moment they are focusing everything down this way and that's just not great for Kua he's trying he's really trying you know things are trying another galaxy goes down here and still they are attempting to get things done in the water Speculari is doing his best but he is focusing up against a lot of harms have a look at these Every single one of those does a huge amount of damage. Going back here, we see that Cascade has jumped into, sorry, Cascade Cheeseberry has jumped into this pond as well. It's got a few factories out at the moment, they're just spitting out engineers for the reclaim. The Archer Arm, I don't know where the engineer went to keep building it. Maybe it died? But yeah, but either way, this air battle is still waiting to happen. The Teesbury with his ASFs over this way and just kind of keeping shielding over these gunships and broadswords. Broadswords are going to brutalize these battleships. So much health to go through. There's so much damage to be done. Have a look at it. What they do. So many broadswords. So many. And just look at the health go. Lots of brickets abound, but they're going to take a long time to get through the broadswords health and also they're going to miss a lot of shots because they don't have tracking and the broadswords don't exactly sit still so a lot of those shots are going to miss and the, these battleships are just going to get turned into mush they're trying to get as much damage done as they can they're firing on, well that was a T3 pigeon that's going to be bad for Kuwa he is trying to get a naval factory back up he does have a T3 support factory but support factory is no good when you don't have the HQ for it and this is the one he's trying to get to HQ. Broadswords are uh, shooed away by a small air wing from Cheeseberry and that's going to be, well I think they were just thrown away deliberately just to scare the broadswords out a little bit. Still not doing the complete air engage but hello strats. Rad bombers are out and where are they going? Well no they're turned back around. Have they been spotted? No, they haven't. This could just be an accidental pickup. They're trying to chase this one, which did not have stealth on. And, well, it's going to be a bit bad, actually, if early doors isn't careful. This group of ASFs are going to be swamped. And they are going to be turned into scrap. A bad turn as well, just at the wrong time. And this is an error engage that early doors does not want. He is going to lose all of these ASFs for basically free especially because they have just done a terrible turn and allowed this giant horde of ASFs up behind them and let's just see what that has done to the numbers because that was a huge amount lost there Cheeseberry sitting on 340 ASFs early doors rocking out with 370 so he's still ahead and he's got these ones that are out of gas so it worked and now he's actually managed to pick up maybe He's cut off a couple of these strap bombers, but he's just thrown away a bunch of ASFs in the meantime. And I think the numbers are probably going to show as being a lot closer now after that little engage. Almost grabbed a transport. That was uh, dropped off a pair of SACUs. And we can see them starting up with some anti-air in the mix. But this has granted a small amount of breathing space for Kuwai. Still can't really get back into the navy game but it has just given him a little bit of time maybe get a bit stabilized get some eco back and hello we've got a few clink, hang clink hammers up this way which will absolutely help but hello bricks there's been a drop or oh, they walked all the way forward we're not sure good evening benjamin how are we doing nice to see you my friend are you benjamin or are you robert there's a question and there's not much to stop these bricks fields down pd's going down Engineers are going down. T2 Adi is firing away from down this direction, and the Broadswords are coming in for some backup. But it's going to be a little bit too late, I think. These bricks are going to be able to shoot down the mass fabs and come boom. Look at just how much it disappears once those mass fabs go. But that is a lot of Broadswords. 
I feel like they might be able to save this mess. No, they're not. No, they're not. You may ask a question, my friend. Go ahead. We hear no Francis. Right, check that air battle. What has it done to numbers here? 376 to 374. So it's even doubt, but Early Doors has a huge amount of production going on. Massive air grid over here. The naval battle done this way has kind of stalled. They are trying to deal with those harms in any kind of shape, form, or fashion. There we go, ground firing cruisers. That would do you as well. Area of effect damage, and that will slowly kill the harms off. Trying to get some team out behind them. And a nuke. Who's that? That is from. He's green. Where's it going this time? Oh, hello. It's actually going up here. Spotted it this time, and while well, there is no SMD, is there? Probably died. And no, no SMD left there, so that's going to be extra. Just extra noise for poor old Kua. I wonder if his comment going to survive this actually. His command is out in the water. There's a large number of subs. I don't think he's going to survive. Have a look at the health, just. It's just going. Too many submarines, not enough health, and even if he managed to get back to land, even if he got back to land, there's a nuke inbound, and he's going to have a terrible, terrible time of that, but he's going to die first. Down goes Kua. Still in the water at that stage, I don't know why, but he was. Anyway, keep your air away from there. Don't have your ASFs if they were still loitering here with that nuke landed. That would be a huge amount of loss, but that's fine. And then we see these strat bombers are doing strat bombery things. Are they going for somebody? They're going for something. Trying to sneak around the top. Have they been spotted is the question. Well, the answer is a solid... Maybe. Pinged up by blastments so that they have been seen. And I don't know what they're going for. Maybe they're going for eco. Maybe they're going for that. What's better for shields? Well, Seraphim shields are stronger. Simply put, they are better shields than Siren. They cost a bit more to run energy-wise, if I remember correctly. But as far as protection goes, Seraphim shields are much better. But that answers your question. Right down here, this battle is stalling out as, as fast as they can kill the harms. More are being put up by these support commanders. They can prevent those happening. Even while that's happening though, more battleships are being pushed out by Pugman. Just a slow attrition there trying to get things done. The air battle has come to full course here, and who's going to be the better ones that come out of that? Well, the problem for early doors is he is fighting over cruisers, so extra damage coming off of these as he tries to do it. Fighting over enemy navy is never a great idea, and there are some strats in the mix, which ASFs will absolutely focus down. Look at this, it's just a giant mess. Not everywhere. A giant ball, and it really is at this point, it's just a giant ball. There's no real tactics to that, and you can see a few ACS splitting off from early doors, maybe trying to draw some of these out of position, or maybe trying to keep an eye on these strats. Strat bombers are going for the eco down here. There's a bunch of T2 mass fabs ready to go, but have a look at what has happened over this way, and we can see the burgundy has one out over the orange and that is not good news for Cheeseberry he is down to 23 ASFs compare that to early doors who still has 180 180 ASFs there to 30 six times as many and that is going to be a big big old problem for Cheeseberry Right, what is... Oh, a Scathus! I was about to come and show you the shield percentages. Anyway, um, or details, so have a look at this here. 
Good upgrade to this strength shield. It runs at minus 500 power and gives 16,500 health protection. So 516.5 now, fortunately, we've only got UEF to compare it to. But even these ones. 1700 health, so even those are stronger than there, and they're using. Maybe because of sitting beside a PG and it's using less power, but it definitely is. But hello, Mavor. Okay, so we have our game enders. We have a Mavor going up for Speculari, and we have a Scathus way ahead by Cheeseberry. That is going to go up a lot faster, and you could always control K this and put the mass into the Scathus, or you could just keep on keeping it so you can do things like nuke over here. Oh, this ain't looking so good for the Navy. Rickets are pushing on up there, just being irritating. These factories down here are all dead. We have some battle cruisers in the mix. And the slowly but surely they might be taking care of the harms. The problem is the harms are on a wee bit of a creep at the moment. Slowly moving forward with them. And that is an issue. But same thing is going on down here. There's so much navy in the water. All of this is basically under threat and pretty much going to go boom. As soon as those get in range. Okay. I think the race is going to be between this Mabel, which has not got much in the way of assistance at this stage, versus this Scathus. Okay, in comes a large wing of torpedo bombers because, hey, he can now. Air is definitely in the hands of early doors. He can also join in the torpedo game if he wants. And they can just start putting out all of these bloody harms. Or they could look at trying to kill the support commanders that are building the harms. But nope. Straight for the harms they go. Look at all the torpedoes. Look at all the tech missiles. They get destroyed. SACU is walking out. Looks like he's just going to go for some reclaim. Trying to get as much as he can while it is still there so much in the bay nothing's gonna survive even last man's main base down here it has been taken out by all this navy can't defend against that and he's had to set up shop back this direction plenty of mass fabs plenty of power just to keep himself alive and in the game but those torpedo bombers have really helped out the tide has been turning look at these poor poor galaxy class battleships getting munted as shots drain on in from the summits. What are these going for? I think they're going for the mobile battleships. Not so great. Just have a gander at look, what it looks like though. If you're a galaxy class battleship, you are in a bad time. So much fire coming in your cast is still with the tech missiles. Torpedo bombers are making an introduction to themselves. Shells are raining on in. You see those just from the background. Big shells lobbing on over. We're gonna see this summer going down. Oh the shots miss. Second salvo hits explosions all over. Terrible time. More shells coming on in and this one is gonna get clobbered. 87 health left there. But nothing doing. More shells ran on into galaxy cruisers. Ah, battleships. Cruisers, battleships. I know what they are. But they are down, and there's basically nothing left in the water now to slow this down. Just a few harms, but they have been ground fired by the cruisers. You can see those tech launch missiles are hitting the water surface, but they have enough area damage that they will take the harms out. Because the harms don't sit on the bottom. Of the ocean they actually float just under the surface close enough that they can be damaged by those so there's your answer if you're getting hit by harms build up a large number of cruisers and ground fire the attack missiles directly onto the harms and that will be all she wrote for those not much doing there but even as there's success there there is success up here this is well under control and what will likely happen now is you'll see some of these engineers walk up onto the beach and start building factories and then now that the navy incursion is done they will turn around and have to try and defend against a ground incursion. 
Hey, we see SMD been thrown up because of course there's always that nuke thing. But uh, never mind the nuke, which by the way is just about loaded and ready to go. The Scathus is done and it is going to start firing. And I strongly suspect it's going to go for what is going to be the biggest threat. There we go, that great big Gatling gun of artillery. Shells flying on over and they are flying on over towards the Mavor, which is... It's way behind. It is way behind and as soon as these shells start landing, it's going to be difficult. Because you're going to have to try and think about keeping the naval building, but also reinforcing these shields so they can hold against the shotgun of shells that are about to land. All this up here is under threat as well. Teaching mass fabs. Anything lands near. Look at that. The cascade of explosions as they're just too close to each other. Shields do go down. More goes explodey. That's an SMD that's exposed and could die with the next salvo. Does he have another one? This one here. There we go. That one's right. It's got three in it. That should be sufficient to protect. That's with this. He could maybe... Oh, that could have been close. The shields go down, the shells land, and so much eco gets destroyed. Loses a T3 mass extractor there, loses a bunch of T2 mass fabs again. Not having a grand old time with that, but we do see he now controls the Navy. So with Navy ownership, it means he can stop building battleships and he can actually start focusing eco down this way and focus he needs to do because his shields are all down and more shells are raining on through. Ooh, some of those shields blinked on just in time. That was going to be a lot of damage. A lot of damage. The Scath is having a grand time and a second one is being built. Why not? So, question is what's going to go on down here though. A third Scathus. So, okay, never mind. Cascade's joining the Scathus game. This one over here, and that one is still being built. Interesting. Well, it is four and a half thousand health trying to get it desperately up. Guys, all the assistance in the world onto that man war. You know what to do it. And the Scathus has changed targets. I think that might be a mistake. It was getting things done here. The shield's going down. The eco is getting destroyed. But what is up here in the form of defensive stuff? Well, some shields. That's going to hurt. Ow. Shells come raining down. The shields do stop some of it. But that's kind of painful for Blast Man. Ow. Actually, he's teleporting somewhere. Where is he going? Is he going to go for the Scathus? Might be an idea. I don't see a tally signal there, so he's going somewhere else. Where is his teleport going? I'm going to try and keep an eye on that because he's very nearly. I couldn't see the thing and wherever he's going is going to be an interesting question. I thought maybe he'd go here. Oh, she is. Right there, right there. And he's up, and he can have a go at the Scathus now. He's right beside it, but his health is just disappearing too much. Team, he does get the Scathus. What's with the link? Well, I'll tell you what. We. Oui. I just couldn't, um... I'm not even sure how that got through. I thought I had links prevented. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. He's banned, but that is Blast Man getting a kill on the Scathus, which was well worth it, because it was doing a huge amount of damage to the other team. Of course, now they can reclaim it and pop that mass into something else. They still do have a nuke in the clip ready to go. They have this Scathus going on up. In fact, it's almost done. It is 8,000 hit points out of 9 completed. And over here, though... The Mavor is very close as well, so it is going to be 
last man has sacrificed himself to take rid of that Scathus. Considering the amount of echo he kind of didn't have, it's not wasn't a bad shout. A bad shout at all. However, we mentioned the ground incursion, and that's exactly what's happening now. We see there's what is typically happens first is the T1 artillery spam comes out. However, it's not going to fare that well against well stingers. Stingers do the job, and of course, ravages will do the job as well. Absolutely outrange it, although maybe triads would be the better choice. They would be able to kill these effectively at range. Alright, the Maybor is done. Maybor is up. Question is, what are they going to shoot at? Scathus is done. It is now a Maybor versus Scathus fight, and the Scathus has the first rounds out, and they are heading on over. We're going to say good day, but now with the Maybor done, they can start assisting the shields. They can keep those shields up, keep the Maybor covered. Maybe they could upgrade this here. I would probably upgrade this shield right here, a T2 shield covering one of your most critical pieces of equipment, S and D. You lose that, you're going to have a terrible time. Absolutely terrible time, but the Maybor is firing. The Scathus is firing, and the Scathus is firing somewhere else. Maybor is shooting somewhere else as well, so they, maybe they don't know. I don't think they do. But the Scathus is firing up this way. I think they're going for the air grid, and that's going to be a bad time. Very bad time, especially as some shields are gone. And hello, shells landing down, and that is a lot of damage. Pop go the T3. Ages. Huge chunk taken out of there, and of course the shields are all looking very, very damaged as well. The next salvo is going to do massive, massive damage to this air grid, even as they are coming in right there. The Mabel is firing at, well it's firing over here, maybe it wants to take out the nuke, maybe it just wants to land on down, but come, boom! Two for one. Even as we just look, yells from the Mabel land on down and two, two comms right beside each other. Maybe they were standing beside some Egens as well because that was a unusual event. I don't know if they were previously damaged but heck. That's a massive tide turner because now suddenly it's just Printer and Cascade. They were all four players, happy and healthy, ready to go, but that shell landed beautifully. Okay, the Maybor is now focusing over this way on the Scathus. The Scathus in turn is focusing back on the Maybor, and it is definitely a Maybor Scathus fight. Look at the extra SMD going up. I don't think they need to worry about that anymore. They have uh, killed off the only nuke I've seen. Don't see one there. Nice big eco farm sitting down there. And no, there's no nuke over here, but desperately throwing us some shields. Going to try and get those up and running before Mabel shells land. The good thing about the Mabel shells is they are slow between. So if you can keep spamming up shields, that is fine. They will get in and they'll turn on in between the shots. But the shots are rapid and they can do a bunch of damage. And if you ever falter, or well, they land in a decent spot, it's not going to matter if you've got the shields up or not, but the Scath is firing away, the shields are getting stripped over here as well. See, they're all nice and heavily damaged. As the shells land, which one is going to collapse first is the question. Is it going to be the Maybor, is it going to be the Scathus? I've got to be honest, my money's kind of on the Maybor. It has a lot more alpha damage, if you will. But the Scathus, ooh, that's a lot of work getting done there. So much kaboom, and look at that now exposed. The only loaded SMD, that could be a trick, but check over this way, what's going on? Well, the Scathus has taken a hit down a little bit, and that could be the tr one to go there. The Maywar is still up on full health, more shells are coming on down, but if that goes, that's going to be a problem. Well, I say that, but there's no actual nuke in play, so I don't believe it's going to be an issue at all. Do we have nukes, Sprinter? Well, the answer to that is going to be evident 
Eight nuke subs. Oh, hello. Hello indeed. So yeah, there's nukes. I take that back. Definitely wants to keep those SMDs alive. That is a bunch of nuke subs. They even have grand old timer. What is this? That is printer. He has jumped on in and he has killed off the SMD that had the anti-nukes. Printer does go down for no, no effect, but heck, that Mabel is going to die. There's SMD, but they're not loaded. That is three nukes coming on in. Shells are coming down. They aren't going to get through. The last few Mabel shells are in the air, but the Scathus now has free reign to check out the rest of the map. Speculari over here is absolutely fine. We get done by the nukes, but the scathless comes down, the shells come down, and that is the end of everything there. Dear idea, there are a couple more Mavor shells in the air. The question is, are they going to be enough? Ooh. Maybe not. That shield's going to blink on. It's going to cover everything. It's going to be absolutely fine. Only a couple more shells left. Scatter survives and is ready, ready to go. Ready to wreck mayhem. Strategic launch detected. And more nukes. There we go, another one coming out here. Another nuke sub in the water. So cascade with the nuke subs has been a good trick. That is going to cause some massive issues going over this way. I thought I saw some SMD earlier, but it has died. No SMD left there, that's going to be a huge problem if that nuke lands. There's a loaded SMD back here. Perhaps that will keep things alive if it comes in range. It does just, that nuke gets shot down and we are happy on that front. Right, Scathus, 206 kills on that. Lots of time to go before veterancy, but it's got plenty of targets. And look at the grey swarm. That is coming over this way. The ASCFs now are very much in favour of Cascade. I think he owns them all. 250 for him. We compare that to the oh, slight advantage to early doors. But that advantage won't survive long with the Scathus lobbing shells down onto the air grid. They're going to have a very, very bad time going on there. We still have Medusas charging on them. We had a monkey. There it is. That's going to have fun hoovering up those all day, every day. And I see a fat boy also rolling up. That will do for those Medusas. Even as this big push is coming on the land, so many Medusas are shoving on in. So many factories. anti areas around as well. Ravagers. We have the monkey. It's going to get itself lots of kills. Fat boy's going to have a grand old time. But that scath is still up and going, still having a fixed time of its life. Nuke subs are on the way up north if they can maybe kill off an SMD. In particular that one. They're going to be able to get their missiles through and that will be all we go. That's not them watching. That is nuke subs from Speculari. So even as Cascade did nuke subs, so has Speculari. And he... <laughs> Oh my word, that is a bunch of nukes spread out. Maybe one will get shot down, although that's loading very, very slowly. So I don't think so. In fact, there we go. The four nukes all spread out over a wide area. And Cascade stuck in the middle of it. One, two, three, four. Cascade goes down. The Scathus goes down and that is so much destruction so much which now leaves nobody cascade was the last one alive